Hello, everybody. My name is Ashton Bowling with the Gator Care Wellness Team. I'm currently an intern finishing up my final days here with the Gator Care Wellness Team. And welcome to Tech Talk. Not to be confused with TED Talk or TikTok. Um, Tech Talk is going to be about navigating screen time with kids. And this was a lunch and learn that we hosted yesterday. If you weren't able to make it in person, um, this presentation is for you. So a little bit about me, um, I am born and raised in Lakeland, Florida, which is about two hours south of Gainesville. Um, this is my family. We uh, were at the UF Family Weekend baseball game earlier this year. I'm currently an undergraduate student about to begin the fall semester in the Bachelors of Public Health program um, with the graduation of the spring 2025. I've been with the Gator Care Wellness team since May 2024. And what prompted me to be interested in this presentation is um, I've had experience with in child care. Last year, I um, worked with a STEM summer camp. If you're not familiar, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So that summer camp um, aligned with that type of program and included activities that align with STEM. Um, I did that last summer. And I've also been part of a tutoring program within East Gainesville since 2022. And I am continuing to do that throughout my college career. So this is an activity um, that is important for you to be aware of your daily average screen time. So if you do have an iPhone, you can go ahead and go into your settings app and select screen time with that purple icon. Um, not sure if you're able to see on my phone, but just out of curiosity, my daily average is four hours and three minutes, which Seems like a lot, but apparently it's 25% down from last week. So that's not great. And we will get into what the good screen time looks like. Um, if you do have an Android device, open the settings app, select digital well being and parental controls. Then you'll select dashboard, and then you should be able to see your screen time. So just take a moment to reflect on this activity. Um, did you? Uh, feel like this was an accurate representation of your screen use um, and just kind of think to yourself why or why not could this be accurate um, also did anything surprise you about your usage did that feel like more screen time than you'd expect or less or maybe somewhere in between like oh yeah that makes sense for um, the kind of screen usage I have so just to get into statistics for adults the uh, average American adult spends seven hours on screens per day. So this can include um, work-related activities and also um, look for leisure, but the average American adult does spend seven hours on screens per day. And why is this important? It's because adults' behaviors play a key role in a child's development. And basically kids copy what you do. They model your behavior. So to get into some current statistics, um, kids ages 8 to 10 spend an average of six hours per day in front of a screen, and those clocks represent the amount of hours that they spend. So one, two, three, four, five, six clocks for this one. Kids 11 to 14 spend an average of nine hours per day. So that is a significant increase from the last age group. Um, that's a lot of clocks on our screen right now. Um, so if you put that into perspective a little bit, um, the recommended sleep um, time for this population is 9 to 12 hours. So if you do the math on that, you're, um, the child is roughly awake for 12 to 15 hours a day. So if you take that, 9 hours a day spent on a screen is a significant portion of the daytime. For the youth ages 15 to 18, um, they spent an average of 7.5 hours a day on front of a screen, which is an increase from the last age group we looked at. Um, just to speculate, I believe this could be due to um, more involvement in activities at school and sports and things like that, um, whereas the younger age group doesn't necessarily have the exposure to those types of activities necessarily. So, this graph is not based on the study, but it is just to show the increase of screen time. Um, but the study from the National Institute of Health um, took 228 children between ages 4 and 12 and um, used data in 2021 and compared that data to um, July 2019. And they did see a total screen time increase of 1.75 hours per day.
And um, I believe that this screen time is only going to continue to rise due to changes in technology and new technologies being released every single year. Something's always changing and we're always finding more ways to be entertained through our screens. So let's go into the benefits of technology because uh, ultimately there is um, definitely a good side to technology use, uh, but there is such thing as too much of a good thing. So we'll also be weighing the drawbacks of that. So for one, um, technology can be used for education. Screens can go beyond just entertainment and they do provide a dynamic platform for cognitive development. Um, this can include math challenges, language puzzles, etc. cetera. Um, and they do enhance critical thinking skills such as resilience, resource management, when you think about it, when you're playing these types of games and you have a limited set of gems to use, um, you really do have to be thinking about um, how much you can use in that moment and if it's worth it to use that much in the moment. Um, it can also teach cooperation, strategic thinking, as well as reasoning. Um, also, technology can provide a creative outlet for kids and uh, even adults. Um, Tech can provide a canvas for digital art tools, music making apps, puzzle games, and anything beyond your imagination. Um, I know that music and drawing can be very great for um, kids. So another benefit is um, creativity as tech can provide a canvas for um, different levels of creativity, such as music and drawing and anything um, up to your imagination. Um, there's digital art tools available, music making apps, puzzle games, and anything you can imagine to enhance um, these creative thinking. Another benefit is socialization. Um, this technology does have the ability to increase interaction between um, kids as it does take away physical barriers to, and allows for more social connections. Um, this is especially important for kids who might face difficulties making friends in person. Maybe they're anxious and maybe they just feel better um, interacting online. I know personally, um, my cousin feels a lot better uh, interacting online than in person as it just makes them less nervous. Um, it can also provide a sense of community. Like if they have a common interest and they're on a shared discussion board, it can really just help you feel connected without um, necessarily being in the same room together. And we did see that this was especially useful during the COVID-19 pandemic as kids who weren't able to go to school and interact with their peers, they were able to see their friends in on an online platform and still be able to interact with their friends. Um, this is also um, useful for being, if a child's friend moves away, they're able to still keep in contact with them, not necessarily every day, but if they wanted to, they do have the ability to do that. So it also provides a great way to increase interaction. So let's go into the dangers of screen time. As we can see, these two girls don't look happy with their screens. So um, a huge, huge, huge um, drawback to screen time is how it affects our sleep. So our screens produce a blue light and this blue light has the ability to disrupt our shutdown cycle as um, when it gets darker, our brain starts to produce more melatonin and that helps us to fall asleep and shut down. But um, this blue light really affects that hormone production and that hormone production production is incredibly sensitive to this light and um, it basically stops us from shutting down like we normally should. Um, and it's also important to note that inadequate sleep affects things like children's mood, cognitive abilities, and just overall growth and development. Too much screen time can also lead to a sedentary lifestyle. This can include things such as poor posture, eye strain. If you're holding that tablet just a little too close to your eyes, that's very dangerous for your eye health. Um, also, it can lead to obesity. If you're not getting up and exercising, um, obesity can be a risk factor for things such as heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. High screen time has also been associated with um, attention issues and associated with high, heightened symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. 
Um, high screen time can also um, lead to overstimulation. When we're exposed to so much content within a short amount of time, we can become overstimulated quite quickly. And this overstimulation can increase feelings of anxiety, depression, and social isolation. Um, it can also reduce the children's ability to regulate their emotional health, which is so important for this age group specifically. So like I mentioned earlier, it does affect children's development. Um, it can impede the social skills, although we did mention how it does have the ability to increase these social skills. It can also impede them. If um, a child isn't interacting with their peers, they'd rather be on their tablet. That's a problem. They're not, they're missing out on that interaction, which is essential for their development. Um, also, a study by the National Institute of Health um, found that with cognitive development, children who spent more than two hours a day on screen scored overall lower on thinking and language tests. So for the big picture, here are some guidelines and recommendations that you can take away from this presentation for the kids in your lives. So the experts recommend for children 18 to 24 months, restrict, restrict screen time to educational programming with the presence of a caregiver. For kids two to five, limit screen time to one to two hours per day. And for six and older, this does include adults, no more than two hours of screen time is recommended each day. So that's very different from what my screen time looks like and I'm finding ways to um, mitigate that challenge. Um, it can be quite challenging, um, but we'll go into some ways we can um, in decrease our screen time overall. So, um, one thing that's incredibly important is to lead by example. This includes taking steps to reduce your own screen time, and we will provide um, some alternatives to screen time later in the presentation. But this is so important, as we mentioned earlier, kids copy your behavior, and when they see that you're on your phone, it wants it, they want to be on their phone as well and be on their screen. So it's important to find things that um, we don't necessarily have to be in front of a screen and find those act types of activities. So with anything, it's important to start small. These small reductions in screen time can help lessen any resistance and small changes do lead to big results. Um, me personally, I have allowed myself to create small changes that lead to big results as um, such as high screen time. So it can work both ways. I have allowed myself to go on my phone before bed. And ultimately that leads to me not being able to fall asleep till midnight when I have work in the next morning. So being able to take those small steps um, back to lowering our screen time is so important. So one thing you can do is agree on daily time limits. It's not necessarily about punishment, it's about keeping a good balance. So it's important to remind your kid whether they're upset about it now or later, um, let them know that lowering screen time isn't, um, it's not about punishment, it's in order to keep a good balance of screen time. So one thing you can implement within a household is uh, tech-free zones. So this is designated time where screens are not allowed at a certain time or in a certain area. Examples of this include screens off in bedrooms, no phones or tablets allowed in the bedroom, or just no screens at dinner time. Talk to each other about your day, find something in common with each other. It's so important to interact with each other. So um, activities like this, banning screen time at dinner is so important as it fosters interaction with one another. So you could opt for activities such as outdoor play, music, sports, and anything else that you would find is fitting for your family. So this one is incredibly important, resisting giving mobile devices when going out. So um, you can opt for books or toys instead of mobile devices, such as phones or tablets. Um, if you're going out to dinner, it's so important for kids to be able to interact with you and interact with those around them and not be glued to a device that's keeping them entertained. Um, I know most restaurants do provide some form of entertainment like coloring or games, but those types of activities do foster interaction with one another and you're not just glued to a device that's keeping you entertained. So it's also important to be involved. Um, watch TV, play games together. Um, this encourages conversations and just overall interaction and then connection. So um, it's also incredibly important to use tech tools, whether this is the first party 
tech tools on your smart devices or in, um, downloading third-party apps. Um, you can set parental controls that safeguard against certain apps or too much screen time. So you can start enforcing time limits. This could look like um, only spending an hour a day on the device and then uh, it has the option to bypass that with a password. So as long as the kid doesn't figure out that password, you should be good to go. Um, it's also so important to be aware of what your kid's being exposed to on their devices and blocking content that you feel is not um, good for them, not safe for them, and um, just overall keeping them safe on their devices. Um, you can also monitor devices. You can see what they're doing, who they're interacting with, who they follow on Instagram, who they've blocked, things of that nature. It's so important to be involved within your kid's life and what they're exposed to. So here's some alternatives to screens. Um, you can opt for things such as gardening, board games, painting, crafts, going to the park, reading. Reading is so important for our attention spans and um, it really just fosters how your brain is supposed to work, not being exposed to all these different emotions within seconds of each other. I know me personally, on when I'm on TikTok, I can become overstimulated very fast as I'm going from a funny video to a sad video within seconds of each other. And that's just not how the brain is necessarily supposed to work. Um, you could offer things um, locally within Gainesville. You could take um, time to go to Depot Park, play on the playground, or just be around nature in areas such as Paints Prairie or the Kanapaha Botanical Gardens. Um, try growing your own vegetables. That is a great way to interact with one another and really just be aware of where your food comes from. Um, crafts could look like printing out some online directions if you don't want to be on the screen with one another, or you could watch a YouTube video that's geared for your child and just allows them to um, have a creative outlet without necessarily being exposed to a screen. So here is... Um, a resource that the Gator Care Wellness team has provided. It's the Digital Detox Challenge. Um, there's a QR code available for you to scan. Um, basically, it's a 30-day challenge to develop healthy, healthy boundaries with technology, and it includes daily emails with specific guidelines that alter your technology consumption. So this is a great way to mitigate those small changes to decrease your overall screen time. Um, another resource that the Gator Team Wellness the Gator Care Wellness team has provided is a thousand hours of outside. So you could print this out and mark those dots of how many hours you're spending outside. Um, the sheet includes what counts for outside hours. So this could include just being outside, enjoying nature, eating outside during your lunch break, or planning a beach day with one another, outdoor workouts, and anything in between. Um, it includes benefits of being outside, such as increasing your life expectancy, improving your sleep, reducing stress, better breathing, and, and so much more. Um, and then it, it can, and then it includes how to get a thousand hours, shoot for one to two and a half hours a day, plan outdoor activities ahead of time and track your hours. And before you know it, you will meet this goal of spending a thousand hours outside. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email the Gator Care, Gator Care Wellness team at gatorcarewellness at shans.ufl.edu. Here's a list of references I used for this presentation. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and found it useful. If you would take a moment to um, fill out the survey, it really does help with future presentations and programs within the Gator Care Wellness team. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this presentation we're, and we're able to learn something new and we're able to take something away from it. Have a great rest of your day.